Today, talking about an article from You Know Who, The Mary Sue, and J.J. Abrams has responded to George Lucas's disappointment with the sequel trilogy. Now, the article says Bob Iger and Kathleen Kennedy respond, but it's really J.J. that makes a statement I want to talk about. Anyway, let's get right into it. J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy addressed George Lucas's alleged disappointment with the Star Wars sequel series. So, this is what it says, but from my knowledge and reading this, it's mostly J.J. who makes the statement. Let's do a quick recap. The recent released memoirs of Disney CEO Bob Iger revealed that George Lucas has been disappointed with the Star Wars sequel series, namely for the unoriginality of The Force Awakens, <laughs> and a recent interview with Rolling Stone has allowed Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy and Force Awakens Rise of Skywalker director J.J. Abrams to respond. And like I said, it's mostly J.J. that responds. I don't see what Kathleen Kennedy said, but whatever she did say would probably be wrong anyway. Then it goes on to repeat George's statement from a few weeks ago. There's nothing new, Lucas said, in each of the films in the original trilogy. It was important to him to present new worlds, new stories, new characters, and new technologies. In this one, he said, there weren't enough visual or technical leaps forward. And that is going very easy on the sequel trilogy, by the way. That's not mentioning plot line, logical errors, character inconsistencies. You know, that's just going really easy on it. One of the things people both praised and criticized The Force Awakens for was its similarity to A New Hope. I didn't really hear too much praise for that. Although it wasn't one of the things that bothered me about The Force Awakens. A lot did, but that wasn't one of them, for whatever reason. Okay. Then over here, they say what makes Star Wars special, which you do not have to hear because we know better than the Mary Sue what makes Star Wars special. Both Ames and Kennedy have taken the criticism in stride, showing respect for Lucas and what he has built while also expressing why this new incarnation of Star Wars is so valuable. According to Kennedy, despite these comments, she believes that Lucas is proud of how the series has continued to grow and expand. He just continually tells me how astonished he is by how far things have come, and now, whatever comes to your mind can be achieved. I can't really speak on behalf of what George is feeling all the time. I'm going to give you a big no shit on that. But I know that he's very, very proud of what he created, and to see people go on and enjoy his now into almost 2020 is remarkable. Okay, so let's just get down to what JJ says. The idea was to continue the story and to begin with this young woman who felt like Luke Skywalker was a myth, Abrams said. And to tell a story that was not just history repeating itself, but a story that embraced the movies that we know as the actual history of this galaxy. So J.J. Abrams didn't want to make a story that repeated itself. However, he made The Force Awakens, which was very similar to A New Hope. Wow, what a genius. That just kind of blew my mind for a second there. How could someone make that statement? They wanted to do something original with it, and then copy A New Hope. Let's keep going. So they are still living in a place where there is good versus evil. They are still living in a shadow of what has come before, still grappling with the sins of the Father and the people who have preceded them. This was not about a nostalgia play. It felt, to me, like a way of saying, let's go back to a Star Wars that we know, so we can tell another story. Very confusing statement. Let's go back to a Star Wars that we know, so we can tell another story. I think what he might be trying to say is let's go back to a classic way of telling stories that's good with new things, but that's not how it worked out, okay? As far as nostalgia, I don't see what's wrong with nostalgia. Here's the thing. Directors these days act like either they could go from nostalgia or they can make a good movie. Now, the problem is you could do both. You could have nostalgia and make a great movie. Mandalorian's a great example. Everything about it feels very fresh and very new, but at the same time, they're exploring all the things we already wanted to know about, like the Jawas, their culture, how they get through the desert, strip things apart, find things. They have the little robot arm from Jabba's palace in Return of the Jedi, and that's nostalgia, but it makes sense. Those were probably commonly used in the world of Star Wars, and it works beautiful. They have words and phrases slipped in from the original trilogy. That's nostalgia for whoever picks it up, and it works great. And they're making a new story. So in the sequel trilogy, J.J. claims it wasn't going for nostalgia, but it doesn't make sense, because you could have both. 
You're supposed to have nostalgia and the good new stuff. Mix it together and make something incredible. Maybe that happened in Dark Fate. Maybe Cameron was like, mm, look at the sequel trilogy. Let's not go for nostalgia. Let's kill John, you know, and just move on with new characters. And, well, we got a big historical bomb on that one. Anyway, you guys let me know what you think of JJ's statements. I know some of you guys out there watch Doomcock, as do I, and he is not very easy on JJ. I've been easy on JJ because JJ only, I think, has one strike against the fans on record about how I'm threatened by women if I didn't like The Last Jedi. I probably think someone told him to say that. I don't know. I don't, like, hate JJ, but when he says, like, stupid things like this that I read in this article, it don't make me like him anymore, and he's starting to slip down a little bit in my book. We'll see how The Rise of Skywalker is. From what I see, from that Kylo Ren helmet glued back together thing, it doesn't look like it's going to be so good. Anyway, doing shoutouts, special thanks, things like that. Smash the subscribe button if you haven't. If you don't want to smash it, click it, press it, whatever you got to do, get subscribed, and I will see you next time. If you are not subscribed to this channel, The Entertainment Hacker, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button now.